Acting isn't easy. It's a craft that takes years for actors to perfect, and even then some roles call for extraordinary preparation. With the announcement of the new Heath Ledger documentary, I Am Heath Ledger, that is set to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival this year in 2017, we figured we'd give you guys a list about the intense regimes that some actors have undergone to get their performances just right. So here we go! In at number 10 is Marlon Brando. No one can deny that Brando is one of the greatest actors of all time, and the way he's committed to some of his roles definitely shows it. You've probably heard of the whole cotton balls and the mouth stint that he pulled on The Godfather, but what you might not know is what he went through during the shoot of Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, based on the novel Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, had one hell of a production. The shoot was supposed to be 14 weeks long in the Philippines, beginning in the spring of 1976, but was massively delayed due to many factors, including a typhoon. Director Francis Ford Coppola was writing the film as they went along, and many of the cast and crew came down with serious illnesses. Plus, there was lots of coke. Like, a lot. Brando, during all this chaos, arrived midway through the shoot and had gained a lot of weight. He was approximately 300 pounds, which shocked everybody. Brando also hadn't learned his lines or undergone any prep for the character. This shut down production for about a week, leaving the 900 cast and crew waiting while Coppola personally read the script out loud to Brando. Brando then shaved off all of his hair and arrived at the idea that improvising all of his scenes was what he was going to do. And he demanded that he was only filmed in shadow because he was insecure about his weight. And at number 9 is Christian Bale. Christian Bale has gone through some pretty intense rituals for a few of his roles. One of the more glorified ones is his weight loss for The Machinist, where he dropped 60 pounds in order to play the part. Take a look at his normal physique compared to what he looked like in The Machinist. At 121 pounds, Bale had to undergo another intense weight gain in order to bulk up for the role he played directly afterwards. Batman and Batman Begins, and apparently spent his time binging on pizza and ice cream. Not a bad reward, but for a while he could only stomach soup since the food made him immensely sick. In at number 8 we've got Anne Hathaway and Les Mis. What's a surefire way to win an Oscar? Drop 10 kilos and eat nothing but oatmeal paste. Or at least that's what Anne Hathaway did to prep for her role in this film. She also shaved her head. Apparently that's a trend. It took her weeks to return to her normal state. Hathaway has openly stated that the role caused her some very serious physical and psychological damage, but looks like it was worth it. She won the Best Supporting Actress award at the Academy Awards in 2013. And at number 7 we've got Malcolm McDowell for his role in A Clockwork Orange. There was only one actor that Stanley Kubrick wanted to play the iconic Alex from A Clockwork Orange, and that was Malcolm McDowell. Although McDowell didn't go insane in his preparation for the character, he was faced with some pretty intense conditions on set. During the famous aversion therapy scene, McDowell was given an aesthetic for his eyes, but still endured excruciating pain from the eye clamps. These eye clamps are only supposed to be used when a patient is lying down in real life, but Kubrick wanted McDowell sitting upright in a chair, and it caused his cornea to be sliced during the shoot. Another Kubrick film on this list, here we have Shelley Duvall. If you've been keeping up with the current news, you'll know that Shelley isn't doing the best these days. Your heart and your lungs and everything, are you Well, are you, you know, damned if I do, damned if I don't. I mean, if I say I'm healthy, first thing they'll do is hurt me tonight. While there's many contributing factors to how the actor's mental state has deteriorated over the years, one of the most infamous stories was from the set of The Shining, and Kubrick's horrible treatment of her, which she has stated was unbearable. Kubrick made her cry almost 12 hours every day for 9 months straight, and would constantly ream her out in front of the rest of the cast and crew, which can actually be seen in his daughter's documentary of the making of the film. Oh Shelley, at least we'll always have this to remember you in happier times. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Hello. I'm Shelley Duvall. And at 5 is Nicolas Cage for his role in Ghost Rider. While his face is mainly CGI during Ghost Rider, Nicolas Cage felt it was essential to get into character in other ways. Cage would wear makeup on his face in order to make himself look like a corpse. He also carried around Egyptian symbols in an attempt to invoke ghosts and spirits. He also refused to talk to his co-stars in between scenes. Rumors from the set claim that he scared the shit out of most of the cast and crew. Up next at number 4 we've got Johnny Depp. Hunter S. Thompson was convinced that the only person who could play Duke in the adaptation of his fear and loathing in Las Vegas was Johnny Johnny Depp. This actually spawned a lifelong friendship between the two. Now, if you've read any of Thompson's books or read up on any facts on him, it's no secret that he had a few screws loose. I mean, most great artists do. But in order to portray this character, Depp felt the need to sleep in Thompson's basement. He slept on a bed next to gunpowder and nitroglycerin, both of which are incredibly explosive. A fact that he was unaware of and also chain smoking while he was down there. He also dabbled in hard drugs while getting into the character, or so it's rumored. But I mean, take a look at his performance and tell me what you think. In at number 3 is Jared Leto 
for Suicide Squad. It was rumored he went full method acting on this one, to the point where he sent his castmates bizarre gifts. This included a box of bullets for Will Smith and a live rat for Margot Robbie, and a video that he sent the whole cast of him with a dead pig. This launched a debate amongst the acting community about the glorification of method acting, and how it's becoming more of a marketing scheme riddled with ego as opposed to a finer selfless creative act. Many didn't like Leto's performance either, to which his response was that the way that the final cut of the film portrayed him was a disappointment. So what do you guys think of his take on the Joker? I mean, the face tattoos kind of killed it for me. And at number 2 we've got Daniel Day-Lewis. In basically every role he's ever done. Daniel Day-Lewis is a full-blown method actor for every single part he plays, many of which are villains. And unlike Leto, Daniel Day-Lewis has been commemorated for his method work, with five nominations at the Academy Awards, including three wins. Lewis will spend months at a time preparing for a role, sometimes years, as was the case with Lincoln. Highlights include only eating the food he personally killed while filming Last of the Mohicans, which also include him learning how to track, hunt, and skin animals while he lived in a forest for several months. Another fact is that he caught ammonia while shooting Gangs of New York because he refused to wear a modern coat. And he didn't bathe for the whole principal photography of the Crucible in order to get the feeling of what it was like to live by 17th century standards. One can only wonder what that does to your psyche when you stay in character for that long, and your sense of self. And finally, at number one, we've got Heath Ledger. Ledger was initially approached by Chris Nolan to play Batman, but declined. But when Nolan approached him again, this time to play the Joker in The Dark Knight, Ledger saw something in the character that made him hungry for the role. Despite negative fan feedback online, Ledger was committed and isolated himself, writing in a diary and collaging images to help him get into the Joker's head. He told Empire Online in an interview during the shoot that he locked himself up in a hotel room for a month, kept a diary and experimented with multiple voices, and landed himself in the realm of a psychopath, someone with very little to no conscious towards his acts. He slept an average of two hours each night during the production. On January 22, 2008, six months before the movie hit theaters, Ledger was found dead in his home in Manhattan due to an accidental overdose of prescription pills. He was midway through shooting The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus with director Terry Gilliam, who claimed that the rumors that the Joker role screwed Ledger up were not true. Regardless of the rumors, Ledger won an Oscar for his performance for Best Supporting Actor, which was accepted by his family. Well there you guys have it. If you dug this list, make sure you hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I've been Kelly Pally with Top 10 Nerd, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.